Hi, this is Larry Adams, and today I'll be providing a brief demonstration of the Cacti FlowView plugin version 0.7. This plugin is designed for Cacti 0.87G and above, and of course it is a plugin 2.0 architecture plugin. And before we get into the features, I'd like to just give you an overview of the uh, actual interface uh, from a plugin management perspective first. So I, we can see here that the FlowView plugin is installed and enabled, and that it is at version 0 0.7. In this version of FlowView, we've introduced a new realm. So we now have a viewer realm and an admin realm. Uh, we've also moved the navigation off of the console to the main navigation tabs at the top. And you can see here we have the flows tab, which is where we'll be doing most of our work today. There is a back-end component that needs to be set up as well, and that back-end component is the flow tools. The flow tools need to be installed on the Linux server, and an Etsy initd process needs to be set up. There is a file in the plugins directory that needs to be copied to Etsy init.d, and then that file needs to be launched as a startup service within the uh, within the Cacti server to receive flow data from external devices, router switches, and Linux boxes as well. In this demonstration site I have a tool called SoftflowD running on my Debian Linux box and it's forwarding information over a UDP port to the Cacti box and storing that data away. So let's talk a little bit about this interface now. We have uh, the same look and feel generally from prior versions of FlowView. So we have uh, a sub-tab interface which is which is fairly popular with uh, most Cacti plugins these days and the sub-tabs you have filters which is where you set up and launch your reports from. You have listeners which is a rename from prior versions of FlowView. A listener is a UDP port that's receiving information from one to many uh, FlowView devices, again router switches, etc and we have schedules otherwise known as email reports where we can have tabular reports sent to us on a schedule. So let's talk about listeners first. Again there's no real change here functionally from prior versions of the plugin. You can have one to many listeners. Each listener will have its own UDP port that it listens on. It will be listening at with a particular version of the NetFlow protocol with compression on and off and a uh, retention period and so forth. So, so there's really not anything new to show here. What I'd add for people that are fairly new to FlowView that when you add or remove an item from this list, you need to restart the service on the on the back end. Okay. So uh, let's talk a little bit about filters then. So back to the filter side, we, we can see that we have save queries, and again, this is not much different than prior versions. We have, uh, in this case, I've got three summary reports, and uh, we'll take a look at each one of these briefly. And the interface is essentially the same. Uh, there's been a little bit of renaming going on here. There's been a few things converted from text boxes to drop-down boxes. The intent here is that the user of this tool is going to know a little bit about how to generate FlowView reports, so they're going to have some experience with the tool. So without uh, much more ado, let's take a look at some output. We're going to look at a summary report, first of all. And the summary report is a high-level report. It shows you what's been going on in this case for the last eight hours on this particular sandbox box that I've uh, got FlowView running on. And so we see the total number of flows over the last eight hours, total packets, total octets. We can see um, the average flow time, the average flow size, the bytes, etc. Um, and we can also see some distribution. So we have packet size distribution, packets per flow, octets per flow, flow time distribution. It may have been better to put it into a histogram or a pie chart. However, this is to be uh, sent out via email, so it's best to keep it in this format for, for now anyway. Um, you can see when we brought up this report that another tab was added to the interface and this is again our summary report as we had named on the previous page and there is an X to the right which would dispatch this report. So I'm just going to go ahead and dispatch that report and we'll go back to our filters and pick our next report. 
and this time we're going to go to testing one two four and this is a source destination IP report it's showing the top 20 let's just make it the top 10 for today and I'm going to go ahead and view that so here we can see the top 10 by traffic uh, this is a just a simple table uh, it is sortable so we can sort by flow by bytes by packets and so forth um, in addition we've added a navigation bar and the na navigation bar uh, has a one drop down and four tabs as well as a clear button the the drop down gives us the ability to exclude samples from the sample set and it's usually on the top end so we can exclude maybe the top five consumers of data and to add a little more contrast to the report and what I mean by that let's just uh, select the bytes bar which is again the probably one of the more significant feature changes between this release and prior releases that we now have the ability from the user interface to do charting both of bytes of packets and flows and so we can see here that the top two flows in this case generate most of the traffic and we really can't get a really good idea of the flow that's running below there in terms of the uh, IP pairs so I'm going to exclude the top two samples from this report and we're going to look at samples three through seven okay and there we go so uh, three through yes three through seven so so here we go now we've got a little more contrast we get a little more information in the report a little more viewable um, and again we have our packets bar as well as our flows bars and I'll just scroll down so you can get a, a look at those okay so again this is by IP address uh, pairs this could be converted to DNS if that's your choice uh, as well and we still have our table at the bottom and you can see here that uh, we've again as mentioned before we have the additional tabs I'll bring up the summary just uh, so you can see that the uh, the tabs are functional and these tabs basically will stay in place for roughly five minutes after five minutes the uh, the data will be rather cached for approximately five minutes after that it'll regenerate the data and go go to the back end but to because some of these reports take quite a while to generate we put a timer on on that cache just to reduce the IO on the server so you can see we have the testing one two three four report as well as the summary report now on the page okay so the last thing we're going to take a look at is the email schedules this is fairly straightforward we have the concept of one-to-many schedules uh, and the schedule has a name it's enabled it, you can pick one of your filters. You can see these are the filters from the prior page. It can, we have a frequency, a time at which it's supposed to be uh, sent out, and the email address. In addition, from the uh, schedules, if you select a re report, you can hit the send button, and that email will that then be sent out immediately. And just to uh, give you an idea what these reports look like, um, I have a sample report right here so that you can see what those reports end up looking like. Okay, so that concludes this demonstration of the Cacti FlowView plugin. Have a nice day.